Uh, ma'am, it is visible, ma'am. Ah, uh, it's visible. Slides. Shall we start? Yes, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so uh, today's uh, uh, topic of uh, discussion is on uh, clustering techniques. So I'll be uh, covering uh, the following topics today: clustering concepts. Then in clustering, uh, what are the different methods? So uh, basically, we'll be concentrating on uh, partitioning methods, hierarchical methods. and then implementation of uh, both partitioning method and hierarchical method using python code uh, so shall i uh, shall i start with the slide am i audible to everybody is the hello yes ma'am you are audible ma'am we can yeah. see this okay i'll just continue okay fine so machine learning what is machine learning so all of you might have come across this uh, definition uh, uh, many a times and along with that uh, you would have also come across uh, uh, what is meant by deep learning neural networks then ai so there might be some kind of confusion what is the difference between all of these so as you can see in this pictorial diagram uh, we have at the heart or at the center um, uh, we have the uh, neural networks then uh, neural networks uh, is something like a base to all of these deep learning machine learning and ai so they are all based on the concepts of neural networks then uh, you have uh, at the outer uh, uh, next uh, uh, level is the uh, uh the deep learning concepts which uh, imbibe uh, more of uh, neural network concepts and then you have machine learning then at the outer ring you have ai so it's like um, ai is a, a superset of all these okay then next you have the subset machine learning is a subset of ai and then deep learning is a subset of uh, machine learning neural networks is again a, a subset of uh, deep learning so uh, whenever you are uh, speaking of applications Uh, which deal with ai so ai will form the uh, i mean uh, uh, the superset of all these so it might in involve certain concepts related to or algorithms related to uh, neural networks deep learning and machine learning so machine learning is focused on teaching computers to learn from data to improve with experience instead of being explicitly programmed so the major thing that what you people have to understand over here is all these while whenever you had to do certain uh, you wanted uh, the computers to do certain job you had to always uh, program that you yourself had to write the algorithm then supply the data for that and then check the output but with respect to machine learning you only have to uh, you don't have to write the program you only have to have a proper uh, data that is uh, i uh, the data without any kind of noise or null value or any kind of outliers and things like this that is clean data once you pre process it with uh, using proper appropriate pre processing techniques you will be getting the uh, uh, the proper um, uh, i mean cleaned data so that data if you have it is more than sufficient you need to just call the python um, algorithms or uh, libraries and along with that the appropriate algorithms are called and then you just have to supply the data so that is what it may, uh, means over here in the definition without being explicitly programmed okay so uh, that is the advantage so if you have a proper data you need to train that data and then get the output and then uh, any kind of fresh data you want you can test it uh, using that trained model and you will be getting the output okay so uh, your uh, output will be uh, i mean uh, <clears throat> more efficient based upon the type of the model that you have used and how efficient or optimized your model is based on that the output will be uh, uh, given okay so in machine learning algorithms are trained to find patterns and correlations in large data sets and to make best decisions and predictions based on that analysis so machine learning is basically used for applications where you need to make decisions okay so you don't know whether you want to purchase a car or a house and whether the uh, the uh, rent of the house is going to increase or whether the budget is going to increase you don't know so you want to predict prediction algorithms and things like that and patterns you want to identify certain patterns then machine learning is used you can see this host of uh, uh, different applications where machine learning is used uh, using automatic uh, machine translation natural language processing medical diagnosis stock market recommendations then self driving cars so self driving uh, reinforcement uh, learning is used there then uh, spam whether to detect whether this particular mail is a spam or not a spam then virtual person personal assistant like uh, chat bots and things like this online fraud detection speech detection traffic predictions all these are some of the major applications of uh, machine learning 
next uh, we will see the broad categories of this uh, machine learning uh, so three major broad categories are there supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning okay so in this uh, we shall see uh, the uh, uh, various algorithms uh, that are used so basically coming to this uh, supervised uh, learning in supervised learning you have uh, classification and regression these are again the sub categories of this supervised learning in classification again you uh, I, the various applications uh, related to classification is identity fraud detection image classification customer retention diagnostics so basically what i'll just uh, uh, cover re regression and tell you the difference between classification and regression so regression is again another uh, type of uh, supervised algorithm and uh, the applications related to this are weather forecasting market forecasting advertising uh, uh, advertising uh, popularity prediction then uh, population growth rate prediction estimating life expectancy and things like that so what you need to understand is here in classification you will just make a classification yes or no type of it okay for example uh, spam uh, whether a given mail is spam or no yes or no kind okay then diagnostic whether a particular person is having cancer or no yes or no type okay customer retention whether this particular person uh, um, uh, will be uh, using the services of this particular company or not okay for example if you have vodafone bsnl or any other airtel connection whether you are going to retain uh, the customer is going to retain the services or he is going to uh, use a different service okay so that fraud detection whether uh, based on the credit card usage whether uh, this person is going to repay back the um, uh, uh, loan amount or not uh, so like that you can do classification is basically that type regression is uh, related to more, uh, to prediction you are going to predict okay whether, uh, whether uh, i mean uh, based on the uh, 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 advertising uh, this one whether the person is going to click this particular advertisement or not you can predict okay weather forecasting whether it is going to rain today or um, uh, i mean uh, uh, or what is the this one whether it is going to rain or whether it is going to be sunny or whether it is going to be humid and things like that then marketing okay market uh, forecasting whether the market is going to improve Uh, in the coming years or not okay so like that uh, uh, estimation life expectancy whether this uh, based on all the health parameters you accumulate for a given person you are going to check whether he is going to uh, survive for what particular age okay uh, so you can estimate that is prediction so all these will come under regression okay so next type is unsupervised in unsupervised you have dimensionality reduction and clustering okay clustering you have recommendation system targeted marketing that is based on their uh, let's say salary or and things like that you can make groups okay based on that group you can identify whether a particular person is going to purchase a house car or a iphone or things like that okay that is customer segmentation so this customer segmentation you can do then targeted marketing is nothing but only a few uh, customers based upon their uh, salary or ba based upon their job profile and things like this uh, um, companies will be targeting only those type of uh, people so all this can be done by means of uh, clustering recommendation system also you go on recommending uh, this is better uh, uh, good and the other one and things like that so in dimensionality reduction is nothing but when you have huge amount of uh, data and lot of features associated with that uh, data uh, you uh, all might not be important you need to cut down okay that is what is dimensionality reduction you don't want certain features you want to eliminate those features then that is uh, feature el uh, elicitation then structure discovery meaningful compression big data visualization all this can be done once you reduce the data you will be have uh, getting a better visualization so this is how uh, we have the um, <clears throat> information then next uh, what is meant by supervised learning supervised learning is nothing but discovering the patterns in the data that relate to attributes with a target attribute so attribute is nothing but here you can consider it as a feature okay you have a particular feature and then uh, you label uh, uh, these patterns are then utilized to predict the values of the target attribute for example um let us say you have set of uh, images uh, related to cat dog and uh, sheep or something like that another animal okay 
so when you train that you already know that this particular image corresponds to cat dog and uh, sheep okay then you will train the network using these images okay when you give, supply a test image okay after training when you supply a test image of a monkey or something so it will uh, say it, it cannot recognize this okay so if you supply a image of a um, uh, dog let us say then it will correctly uh, identify that okay this is the image of a dog why because you already have uh, all these images which are already labeled we call them as labeled data so when you give an unlabeled data to the network after train it will correctly identify okay whether it is a cat or a dog or whatever uh, sheep or monkey or whatever image you have supplied it will correctly identify okay whereas in unsupervised learning training is not involved so the data has no target attribute why training is not uh, involved over here is the samples that your data samples that you have collected will not be uh, labeled for example you have a mix of uh, uh, fruits let us say uh, you have um, apple orange uh, strawberry and other uh, banana or some other fruits and they are not labeled so you will uh, group them based upon the characteristics of the uh, features that are present so that is why we say there is no target attribute so we will explore the data based on some structure that is present within them okay so reinforcement learning is completely different over here we talk about a suitable action uh, to maximize the reward in a particular situation so in absence of training data set it is bound to learn from its experience so best examples for reinforcement learning is uh, whenever you have uh, self driving cars okay uh, in self driving car what happened what happens is uh, the the situation that is the road in which the car is traveling you don't have the that particular uh, the data related to uh, that particular um, uh, information okay so uh, what happens as and when it collects the data images of that particular data it will start recording uh, okay uh, what is the road size what is the width what uh, how long is the uh, obstacle from this uh, from the car and things like that it will start calculating then and there okay and then it will store it so next time when it comes across a similar kind of situation it will mm, uh, try to recognize okay this is the situation this is the action that i have to take okay another example is uh, if you have chess board okay if you are playing chess so you don't know what the what kind of moves the opponent will make okay so you will have uh, once the opponent makes a particular uh, move you will uh, try to register that uh, data and then based on that data you will try to make decision that what is that is what is uh, reinforcement uh, learning okay so uh, you you can remember like this reinforcement learning uh, you will not be having complete data at hand okay as and when the data comes you will experience i mean you'll uh, the network will start learning that okay examples of uh, supervised uh, learning algorithms in supervised learning algorithms you have um, uh, these uh, many algorithms plus a uh, few more you might have uh, the important ones i've just uh, picked up linear regression logistic regression k nearest neighbor decision tree random forest support vector machine so these are the various uh, algorithms wherein training of the network is involved you have labeled data you already know what kind of uh, object this is okay hence training becomes simpler okay next examples of unsupervised learning algorithms dimensionality reduction <clears throat> uh, density estimation market basket analysis generative adversarial networks nyans clustering algorithms which are quite uh, famous k means uh, db scan mean shift hierarchical okay these are some of the uh, clustering uh, algorithm then clustering uh, techniques there are different clustering techniques like partitioning method hierarchical method density based method graph based method model based clustering and things like that today we we shall discuss partitioning method and hierarchical methods okay so here uh, you can see uh, various algorithms under partitioning method k means algorithm k medoids k modes fuzzy c means and again in k medoids you have pam clara clarence and things like that again there is slight variation from one algorithm to another each will try to uh, each algorithm will try to see what is the disadvantage in the previous algorithm how it could be improved and uh, based on that the results are obtained okay so next you have uh, hierarchical algorithm in hierarchical you have uh, divisive and agglomerative which we shall cover today 
then next you have uh, in divisive again you have a uh, sub branch diana then agglomerative you have ages birch cure rock and um, uh, things like that chameleon and uh, algorithms like this then in density based you have uh, these uh, algorithms sting db scan click uh, then optics wave cluster and things like that then graph based methods you have mst clustering then uh, opossum S snn similarity clustering so these are again uh, based on graph techniques then model based you have em algorithm auto class op web ann clustering and things like this so these are this is a huge uh, this one so when you want to do a uh, research on a particular type of topic you choose then you could uh, uh, take up papers related to uh, to all these and then find out what are the advantages disadvantages how you could improve and things like that okay so what is uh, basically what is clustering so clustering is nothing but task of grouping it is grouping a set of data points such that the data points in the same group are similar to each other than the data points that are farther away okay so you can see here this is uh, you have grouped why uh, uh, because all these data points uh, in this particular group exhibit similar cluster okay and coming to this group you again have a set of data points which are uh, similar to each other okay but when you compare this group with this uh, uh, the other group which is uh, uh, farther away the characteristics are different okay because the characteristics are different you put them in uh, they are farther apart, apart okay so we need to identify such groups so you can see here you supply raw data they are not labeled that is the uh, that thing you need to remember you don't know which is a strawberry which is a pear which is a apple which is an orange okay you run the algorithm k means algorithm or something like that or k means plus plus algorithm then uh, uh, it will cluster okay based upon the features that each of these fruit have and it will cluster it into different groups like this okay so that is what is a clustering algorithm so your um, uh, it helps you to get labeled data afterwards so you then later you can label okay all these set of groups uh, because they exhibit similar characteristics they are sim uh, you put them into one group so you can see what is the natural uh, grouping amongst this group so you people might ask how do you group it okay so grouping no uh, we don't have any specific characteristics so based on what is available what kind of uh, characteristics or features are available you try to group them so you can consider this example here as uh, shown in this slide this is the family of simpsons okay so the grouping or clustering can be subjective we say because it can uh, uh, the grouping can be done based on uh, simpsons family okay whether this is uh, you know, simpsons family you can form one group all school employees you can form one group all females you can form one group all males you can form one group all uh, uh, kids you can form one group all aged people you can form one group okay so that is why we say clustering is uh, subjective okay next so what are the applications of uh, clustering so applications of clustering already we have seen uh, in the earlier slide also quickly we shall see uh, so online uh, marketing advertisement content analysis spam filtering fake news identification and then identifying online fraud okay so all these are uh, some of the examples of uh, clustering okay so where we you try to group uh, 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 i mean uh, similar uh, characteristics or features are grouped into one group and uh, one which exhibits different from the group you will put them into a different group okay then in clustering techniques uh, as uh, seen in the previous slide partitioning algorithm and hierarchical algorithms are two different categories of uh, clustering in partitioning what you do you try to construct the various partitions and evaluate them by some kind of a criteria okay uh, in hierarchical what we do you try to create um, uh, you try to decompose from the set of objects so as you can see pictorially you will be able to better understand so partitioning you try to Uh, group it it is nothing partitions are nothing but groups okay and you try to evaluate on some criteria like all these are employees all these belong to simpsons family and things like that hierarchical what you do uh, you form one huge cluster from that you go on breaking it decompose it into smaller and smaller groups and then try to find out okay how these two are related okay these two might be twins or these two are kids or these two are aged or these two smoke that is why they are put into one group okay that is hierarchical clustering so in partitioning uh, uh, partitional uh, clustering 
uh, it is said to be non hierarchical as you can see in this previous slide also partitional uh, clus uh, clustering algorithms they are said to be non hierarchical okay and it is placed in uh, each instance that is each object or each data point is uh, um, is placed in exactly one of the k non overlapping clusters so what this means is initially when you want to cluster here each data point um, or each member you consider it to be separate okay then you try to partition based on certain um uh this one uh, characteristics okay and initially you have to have an input desired number of clusters so let us say you have to define the value of k at the beginning itself okay i want k equal to 3 i want k equal to 2 so based on that let, let us say in this case k equal to 2 hence all these objects are put into two groups okay so actually there are 6 7 8 nine objects over here or nine data points so nine data points you have put into two Uh, groups and hence k is two over here. We have defined k to be two and hence two partitions. Now, uh, one uh, another important definition over here is cluster center. Cluster center is nothing but a centroid. So a cluster is represented by a single point known as centroid. What is centroid? Centroid is nothing but mean of the data points that belong to a particular group. Okay, you can see here. it is just summation of xi xi is nothing but all the data points which belong to a particular group okay cluster boundary is decided by the farthest point in the cluster so this is a farthest point from this cluster hence you form a boundary okay so i hope uh, everybody has understood what is a centroid it is simple uh, each group you consider once a cluster is formed then take the mean of all the data points that uh, the mean value that you get will become the centroid then this is how the k means algorithm uh, works so this is the algorithm uh, i mean uh, let us say initially you have d as the data set uh, consisting of n objects as we had seen the example of simpson's object the objects there were nine objects and k is the number of clusters that you want let us say you want two clusters you can define k equal to 2 if you want three clusters you can define k equal to 3 output is a set of k clusters so out <clears throat> initially you have to define k so step randomly choose k objects from uh, from um, d that is the data set as the initial cluster so what you uh, before you start this algorithm you have to define the value of k and randomly choose the cluster centers okay because you don't know what group the data points belong to okay and hence randomly you need to choose the cluster centers then once you choose the uh, cluster centers compute <clears throat> now you need to go on grouping the data points to which group it belongs to so for that what you need to do you need to compute the um, uh, distance uh, whether this um, uh, data point belongs to which uh nearest cluster center and start grouping them okay assign the current objects to that cluster which is closest so you will compute the cluster centers for each clusters in the next uh, slides we will discuss how to compute the distance okay and then uh, how to group them okay so now um, you compute the cluster centers then uh, after this Uh, groups are formed then form the new cluster again uh, try to uh, form new cluster new cluster is formed by again uh, uh, choosing the new cluster cent centroids so for this you need to find the mean mean of that particular cluster that becomes the cluster uh, centroid and then again try to group all the data points okay then you go on doing like this step 2 and 3 you go on repeating till the convergence criteria is satisfied what is that convergence criteria we shall see okay so this is uh, <clears throat> all these convergence uh, uh, this one are given over here so objects are defined over here and then the uh, the distance computation can be done using either manhattan distance euclidean distance or cosine similarity any of these you can use and then group it okay and then minimum distance is the measure of closeness between an object and the centroid so try to find out which uh, the data sample which is nearer to the centroid you try to put it to that particular uh, centroid okay so convergence criteria so just now i said convergence criteria will help you to stop the algorithm when there is no more improvement in the algorithm you need to stop at that 
some particular point. What is that point? Either it could be number of maximum iteration permissible. So maximum iterations are over. No more changes are possible. You stop. Then no change in centroid values. So you go on recalculating the centroid points at each iteration. And it so happens that at some point of time, the centroid will not change. Okay. Then you stop. Okay. Then zero or no significant movement of objects from one cluster to another cluster. Every time you find that the cluster group size is same and there is no cluster a data point movement from one cluster to another, you stop. Okay. Cluster quality reaches to a certain level of acceptance. Okay. You find that, okay, the quality of the cluster is fine now. I'm going to stop. Okay. So we shall see each of these how this could be done. So the for visualization, you can just have a look at this. All these are the data points. So randomly, we will choose the initial cluster centroids first. Okay. So K1, K2, K3 are the initial cluster centroids. So now what we do, we try to group all the, I think, uh, we try to uh, group all these data points based upon the distance metric. So you try to calculate the distance between the point and the centroid. Whichever is nearer, you put it to uh, that particular group. Either you put it to K1 group, K2 group, or K3 group. Okay. So you start calculating the distances of uh, uh, using all these data points. Whichever is nearer, you go on putting it to that particular uh, group. Okay. And you uh, uh, once you, uh, the group is finalized, uh, you iterate, and then uh, when no more changes are possible, you try to when the algorithm converges you stop okay so this is the final uh, group okay you see that k1 is one group with the green which is indicated in green then red is uh, k2 the other group uh, orange is k3 okay so you can see here what is the strength and weakness of this k means uh, k means is actually relatively efficient when you consider that uh, the amount of time that it takes it is big o of t into k into n where n is the total number of objects, k is the clusters, and t is the total number of iterations that are um, uh, possible. Okay, so normally uh, the value of k and t is less than the total number of objects. Okay, what is the main weakness of this algorithm? It is applicable only when the mean is defined, and uh, if you have categorical data, categorical data is data wherein you have. Uh, uh, you don't have numbers. You have S, no kind of uh, uh, this one. And then uh, you have uh, true, false, or you have uh, different colors. And uh, the, I mean, you don't have any numeric value. Okay. That time it becomes difficult. Then you need to specify the value of K, total number of clusters in advance. Okay. Then unable to handle noisy data and outliers. If you have an, one huge data, then uh, uh, you are unable to uh, remove that outlier data because of that outlier data, your results might vary. Okay, so you cannot the K means algorithm cannot handle that. So, if you have uh, outliers, we shall see uh, what kind of difficulty uh, this will give rise to. And it is not suitable to discover clusters with non convex shapes. So, we will come to the implementation part using Python now. Python 3 plus, uh, that is a higher version, three, uh, 3 and above could be used. So Python is an interpreted high-level general purpose programming language. The li major libraries that uh, we, uh, we will be using over here is Pandas, NumPy, and sklearn. sklearn is also known as a scikit-learn uh, uh, library. Pandas, is, uh, it is a Python-based library written for data manipulation and analysis. All your uh, data structures, the algorithms that you, you use, all these are defined in Pandas. NumPy is basically for all array manipulation uh, related. Uh, so it is Python-based library that supports large multidimensional arrays and matrices. Okay. Scikit-learn is, again, a free software machine learning uh, uh, li library for Python. So all your, um, I mean, uh, important uh, algorithms uh, like uh, k-means uh, related to uh, supervised and supervised learning uh, all these could be uh, is supported by this uh, uh, sklearn uh, package okay so popular uh, how do you get this uh, python P uh, popular uh, machine learning toolkit in python is uh, defined over here uh, i mean you can uh, take it here uh, scikit-learn.org uh, stable and requirements, you can uh, download Anaconda, and it is available at this website. 
this is the individual version and it is a as we have discussed it is an open source uh, package that is available you can install this and then uh, once you install anaconda you can install jupyter notebook and uh, launch the jupyter notebook once you launch the jupyter notebook you can start uh, working on the code okay so uh, as we have already discussed uh, the k means algorithm uh, first uh, and foremost thing you need to find the euclidean distance between the data instance and centroids we shall see this with an example uh, then assign the data instances to the clusters of the centroid with the nearest distance calculate the new centroid va values on the uh, mean values and go on calculating the new centroids till the convergence is reached okay so the sample data we have first we'll discuss how this k means algorithm works then we will apply the uh, code uh, in uh, uh, using the python library okay so these are the two dimensional uh, data instances we are, uh, so the capital d here uh, represent the complete data set so we want to divide this uh, uh, data into two clusters so my uh, value of k will be 2 now so i am defining this initially itself okay so C1 and C2 um, are the uh, centroids it based on similarity between the two data points. The first step is to randomly initialize the values of, of the centroids. Okay. So I will randomly pick 5,3 as the first centroid, okay, which is given in lowercase c1 and uh, c2. So second uh, centroid is 10,15, uh, which I am randomly choosing it okay, to be my initial cluster cluster centers okay so capital c1 c2 will give you the group group name okay that is the uh, group one is called as c1 and group two is uh, c named as uh, capital c2 lowercase c1 c2 will give you the initial uh, randomly chosen centroid points okay so in this uh, the first iteration of the algorithm k means algorithm we'll be using this uh, euclidean distance matrix so what does the distance matrix say How, if you want to find the distance between the two data points it's given as square root of the difference uh, uh, square of the difference between those two points okay and uh, uh, you can see here xi1 minus xj1 uh, square plus xi2 minus xj2 whole squared so like this it goes on depending on how many points you have okay it is sum of the difference of the squares of all the data points which you have and the square root of that value okay so first data points we take 5 comma 3 and euclidean distance from the initial centroid c1 which we have chosen as uh, 5 3 and the second centroid uh, we have chosen as 10 comma 15 so if you if we can you people can uh, quickly calculate and this i'll just give you two minutes time so between 5 comma 3 and 5 comma 3 it is zero the distance because you're finding the difference between those points over here then between 5 comma 3 and 10 comma 15 what is the distance okay if you apply euclidean distance it will be like this uh, 10 minus 5 a whole squared plus 15 minus 3 the whole squared uh, summation of that and find the square root of that so if you find the square root of that it will give you 13 so i'll just give you two minutes time randomly you can choose uh, two points and then find out uh, the distance value whatever is given is uh, fine or not So, did uh, anybody calculate one or two values? Okay, say something. At least you put in the chat yes or no, something like that. So, were you able to calculate? Okay. So, once you find out this, this gives uh, the distance of all the da remaining data points. So, all these data points, uh, whatever, 15, 12, 24, 10, how far are they from the uh, centroid? So, many of them have answered yes. Okay. It's simple calculation. So, once you know the distance, you put all this distance over here. Now, based on this, we will have to make groups to which group it belongs to. Okay. So, if you come to this, uh, the assigned cluster will be c1 why because this data point okay we cannot consider 5 comma 3 because it is the cluster central already now we come to 13 
the next point 13 13 is much closer to 10 comma 15 correct it is closer to 10 comma 15 we will hence we have put it into uh, i mean uh, just see okay you need to consider this data point pi 3 pi 3 pi 3 is uh, closer to which uh, uh, centroid c1 value c1 because the distance now you compare 0 and 13 which is minimum choose the minimum and put it in that particular group which is minimum 0 since 0 is minimum we have uh, it belongs to which uh, centroid c1 so i put it into c1 okay now you come to 10 comma 15 okay once you come to 10 comma 15 you have found out the distance using man uh, yeah sorry euclidean distance so based on that you get 13 and 0 which is minimum out of this 0 okay 0 belongs to which uh, group c2 so i have, I have assigned this point 10 comma 15 to c2 meaning that 10 comma 15 is more nearer to 10 uh, 10 and 15 rather than 5 and 3 okay i put it to c2 i'll come to 15 comma 12 now 15 comma 12 you have distance 13.45 and 5.83 Meaning that 15,2 has a distance of 13.45 to the centroid C1 and it has a distance of 5.83 to the centroid C2, okay, which is minimum in this 5.83. So it belongs to what, which uh, centroid C2, it, meaning that it is much nearer to the centroid C2. So I am putting it into C2 group. Now, Randomly, you choose uh, some number 60.78, 60. 60. Uh, sorry, 60.78. 60.78 is nearer to C2. Okay, again, it is nearer to C2. I put in C2. So you can observe that there is only one point, uh, the initial cluster center in C1, remaining are all data points go to C2. This is just the first iteration. We'll move to second iteration now. Okay, this explanation has been given over here. Okay, so I'll not read all this. You can just, uh, uh, whatever I've explained, the same thing is put over here. Now we will, cal our next goal, when we want to go to the second iteration, we need to calculate the new cluster centers. How do you calculate the new cluster centers? Find, now that you know the data points which belong to the group, I will find the mean value of that. So you can see over here, uh, the mean value, uh, how do you find uh, C2 of X and C2 of uh, Y and then C1, okay? So for cluster C1, there is currently only one point. As you can see here, in C1, there is only one point, five comma three. Okay, therefore, the mean of the coordinates remain the same and the new centroid for C1 will be five comma three only. Now, coming to the cluster center C2, when we come to C2, you have to find the mean of all these points. Okay, that will give you new cluster center C2. Okay, so how do you find the mean of that? 10, uh, C2 of X, 10 plus 15 plus 24 uh, divided by 9. There are 9 points over here in uh, C2. We'll get 47.77. Similarly, for y, y, you can see here, it will be 15 plus 12 plus 10 plus 45, 7 plus 70 plus 80 plus 78 plus 52 plus 91 divided by 9 because there are 9 mean, you're finding the mean 9 points, 50.33. This is the new cluster center. So the new cluster center... Uh, uh, the updated centroid C2 will be 47.77 comma 50.33. So we will see in the next iteration what happens. Okay, next iteration, as we all know, the cluster centroid uh, centroid had only one point, hence only 5 comma 3 remains there. The new cluster center, which we just now calculated, is put here. Again, you apply the Euclidean distance formula and calculate all these distances. Okay. So once you calculate all these distances, again, you need to group the points, okay? Once you start grouping. So we'll come to here, uh, this. Whichever is minimum, you put that point 5,3 to C1 group. Now coming to this 10,15. 10,15 belongs to which group? It belongs to C1. Why? Because 13 is minimum compared to 51.71, okay? It belongs to C1 group, okay? Now, randomly you choose some other group, uh, uh, some other data point. Okay, 85,70. When you choose 85,70, you see the distances. 104.35, uh, it is uh, at a distance of 104.35 from C1. And it is at a distance of just 42.10 with the centroid C2. From the centroid C2. 
so which is minimum over here 42.10 hence i will group 85 point uh, sorry 85 comma 72 c2 correct somebody has answered c2 yeah it's uh, because it is minimum and it is nearer to c2 i'll put into c2 now you just all of you observe from iteration 1 to iteration 2 what is the difference we have four more data new uh, points in iteration 2 which belong to the group c1 okay and the remaining uh, six uh, data points belong to group c2 so there is a change now correct so you have four uh, data points in c1 and six data points in c2 okay which is an improvement compared to iteration 1 we'll go to iteration 3 in iteration 3 again you need to calculate the new centroids okay so you need to calculate the new centroids once again so how do you calculate the new centroids again again um find the mean value okay mean value of uh, all the data points uh, which belong to c1 find the mean value of all the data points which belong to c2 okay correct so now i will i'll calculate so uh, in uh, c1 there are how many points now in iteration 3 okay before we go to iteration 3 this is the mean value the new centroid value is this okay so it is uh, nothing but 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 24 uh, divided by 4 because only four data points belong to c1 then 3 plus 15 plus 12 plus 10 plus 45 which belong to the y point of uh, c1 so the new centroid value is 13.5 and 10 uh, 10 okay 13.5 and 10 and this is with respect to what c1 group now coming to c2 group c2 group again you find out the values okay 30 plus 85 plus 71 plus 60 plus 55 plus 80 divided by 6 uh, because there are six values in c2 45 plus 70 plus 80 plus 78 plus 52 plus 91 the mean of this will be 69.33 so these are the new cluster points what are they 13.5 and 10 is one cluster center the other uh, cluster center is 63.5 and 69.33 okay now again you start the iteration so once you moved uh, you will get iteration 3 uh, in iteration 3 again find out uh, apply the distance metric and find out uh, how the points move okay so you can see here the minimum if you consider 5 5.3 uh, which is the minimum 11.01 compared to 88.44 so 11.01 uh, it is uh, nearer to what this distance is nearer to c1 so you say 5 uh, 5.3 point is nearer to c1 compared to c2 because it is at a distance of 88.44 to the cluster centroid c2 whereas it is just at a distance of 11.01 with respect to cluster center c1 so i will group this 5.3 data point to cluster center c1 okay next i will group 10.15 to c1 why because it is nearer to c1 which is a, just at a distance of 6.10 okay compared to 76.24 like this pick up another point 55.52 if you see this distance it is just at a distance of 19.30 Uh, uh, uh with respect to c2 but it is at a distance of 59.04 uh, with respect to c1 so i will group it to c2 okay now you can see again there is an improvement in uh, this iteration there were only four points in c1 now you have got five data points in c1 and five data points in c2 okay now again calculate the cluster center so when you calculate the cluster center you have 16.8 and 17 and 70.2 and 74.2 again you calculate the distances so there is no improvement in iteration 4 five points only remain in c1 the same five points remain in c2 no improvement okay then once you calculate the cluster center again here it remains the same compared to uh, c 16.8 and 17 and 70.2 and 74.2 it is same when you calculated the cluster centers in iteration number 3 in iteration 4 also the same cluster centers are there that is there is no improvement in the centroids or cluster centers that you calculate in the next iteration 
and there is no movement of points also as you have seen so it means that you need to stop the algorithm or converge so you stop at this point okay so uh, and uh, you say okay it has grouped the data, uh, given information into two clusters c1 and c2 okay so now uh, this is all how the algorithm works okay now we will see how this can be done using Uh, the python libraries the major uh, k means clustering algorithm implementation is given in the uh, scikit learn uh, library or it is also simply called as sk learn library so important things that you need to import is import matplotlib dot py plot as plt so plt is again, is uh, just you are uh, renaming this complete thing uh, so henceforth onwards you can use plt whenever you want to use matplotlib basically matplotlib uh, is used uh for visualization okay whenever you want to do visualization graphs or uh, scatter plots all those things you uh, heat maps you want to generate all that using this so there is one more uh, library that is cborn cborn is also built up on top of this uh, matplotlib that is also used exclusively for visualization purposes okay then numpy uh, numpy is uh, basically arrays it contains multi dimensional arrays two dimensional all the arrays arrays and matrix all these are defined in this uh, library import numpy as np then from sklearn.cluster import k means so from this uh, sklearn library i am going to use uh, this uh, use this package cluster from this cluster package i am going to import k means algorithm okay so now preparing the data so the next step is to prepare the data that we want to cluster so preparing the data uh, in case if there is noise and all those things you can you can remove and you find some data is uh, improper or something you can remove it okay so you just see here we have used uh, we have declared an array x and then np dot array is the numpy numpy object np uh, dot array you have defined uh, considered all the uh, 10 uh, data points over here and put it into the array x the name of the array is x over here first we will visualize using uh, by drawing a scatter plot okay this scatter plot will tell us whether uh, we can go for two clusters or whether we can go for three clusters okay so you can just see here it is simple visualizing the data uh, plt plt as you have seen here it is an um, object of the type matplotlib so or alias of matplotlib so when i consider alias of matplotlib uh, i will consider plt dot scatter okay scatter plot i have drawn scatter and then i've used uh, the x array so uh, try to recollect the x array contains all our 10 data points okay and colon over here means colon uh, in this particular uh, context means consider all the rows so all the rows and zero over here is consider the zero the column data only okay so if i just go to this point it considers all the rows means all the data points will come from 5,3 to 80 80,91 all the data points will be covered okay then zeroth column means it will consider 5 10 15 24 30 85 71 60 55 80 0 zeroth column then column uh, number 1 means uh, all these data points will come 5 3 15 12 10 other uh, okay so like this so based on this label equal to true position i have given this is the syntax that is used so i will get this scatter point uh, plot from this i can choose either k equal to 2 or k equal to 3 and do so we shall choose both and see how our algorithm uh, works okay okay now we'll come to the actual uh, coding k means then n underscore cluster equal to 2 this is a syntax we are, are considering only two clusters and i am uh, creating an instance of this k means algorithm uh, uh, the instance object name is k means k means uh, once you have clustered it you have to fit that um, data points to this k means model okay this is called as fitting that data to the model so what is the model that you are using it is clustering model in clustering you are using what k means algorithm i am fitting this data just observe that it is just two lines of code okay 
you can see the amount of effort that you would have taken if you have not gone for machine learning algorithm non machine learning or traditional algorithm if you have gone for some procedural algorithm you had to write the algorithm then feed the data then uh, give the value of the clusters uh, and then you would have to uh, see the outcome of it but here you just see these two itself is enough so the data has been fit and your algorithm is ready now i mean it has given the output already in the first line you create the k means object and pass it as uh, two that is the value of k that you are passing how many clusters i want okay next you simply have to call the fit method on k means and pass the data that you want to cluster which in this case is the x array so what is uh, this x x contains the complete data set points which it will fit into what two groups okay so next i want to print the values uh, let us say i want to print the cluster centers also k means print k means dot cluster underscore centers underscore so this you need to uh, type in the um, k means uh, i mean in that uh, jupyter notebook uh, this one and execute it uh, using jupyter notebook you will be getting this values it will output this 16.8 and 17 and 17.2 and 74.2 so i'll just uh, at the in the end i will just show you how uh, how the jupyter notebook uh, looks like and how you can code all these um, uh, code whatever i have given you can uh, put it there then print k means dot labels underscore it will put all the labels see just these labels 0 and 1 what it indicates you know 0 uh, refers to the first cluster which we had named it as capital c1 111 refers to the second cluster c2 capital c2 which we had uh, group so it is nothing but all these data points belong to group 1 then the, the remaining which is indicated as 111 belongs to all the data points belong to the group 2 now c2 okay that is all okay and uh, in python it is labeled as 0 and 1 group if you had k equal to 3 it will label it as 0 1 and 2 okay so that is that is all okay so now we will see how uh, this scatter plot uh, we have labeled so yes, in scatter plot we are considering the array uh, the first parameter over here uh, colon indicates consider all the rows of the array okay and zero means consider only the first column of the array and one means consider uh, consider the second column that is uh, the array index starts from zero okay then c equal to k means dot labels underscore c map equal to rainbow rainbow colors will be used okay so you can see here this will be the output so with just two lines of code and the code to plot the graph that this is scatter scatter plot will be plotted over here so you can see here all these points which are marked in purple belong to c1 group all the points which you have marked in red belong to c2 group that is all only two lines of code okay so now it's the same thing same uh, this one i will put k equal to 3 that is all change i have made okay i will run the algorithm k means n cluster n underscore cluster equal to 3 this is the uh, uh, k means uh, instance of this k means algorithm then using that instance i will uh, fit the uh, input array x and the output that is obtained will be this okay so uh, 13.5 10 74 79.75 42.5 and 48.5 are all the cluster centers because i'm printing it the output will be this and in the next slide we can also uh, mark that in your scatter plot which is my cluster center you can identify so you can see in this scatter, scatter plot because i have given in the k means uh, algorithm in the python script the clusters to be three it has clustered into three all these which belong uh, which are marked in purple belong to one group c1 in red it is c2 and in green it is c3 so you can see here the output is zero one and two combination all these first four points of the array x data points belong to the group c1 and all marked in one belong to group c2 and points which are marked in, with the label two belong to the group c3 okay so this is all so you can see these points which are close uh, close together and they are clustered together okay so we will uh, you uh, now in this graph what i have done here over here is i have marked the cluster center also which is marked in black okay to mark the cluster center this is the code that you have to use okay 
plt dot cluster uh, this uh, labels with labels it will put then in the scatter plot i have i i will use uh, the k means object k means dot cluster underscore center then colon uh, zero uh, and k means dot cluster under uh, underscore centers uh, underscore uh, colon one so this is the code which uh, will mark the cluster center for all the three uh, clusters okay that is the first column of values and the second column of values okay so it is marked uh, whatever is uh, displayed in black but black will give you the cluster centers okay for the same graph from this one of them will be the cluster center that i am marking over here by executing this particular code okay so conclusion of this uh, k means is k means clustering is simple yet it is very effective unsupervised machine learning algorithm for data clustering it clusters data based on euclidean uh, distance between the data points and it is used for grouping text documents images videos and much more okay now we will go to the clustering criterion okay what is the similarity function stopping criterion cluster quality this is this is very very important because you should know where the algorithm uh, has to converge isn't it before that the similarity function i either one of them you can use euclidean manhattan weighted euclidean squared euclidean chebyshev distance so like this there are different distance algorithm you can explore them and the formulas for all these have been given over here euclidean distance as we have discussed today's uh, session it is simple square root of the sum of the difference of the squares of the points okay next and distance is just the uh, difference of the absolute values of the points some of them uh, some of the difference of the absolute values of the points weighted uh, as the name indicates weighted uh, the same euclidean distance formula you just have to consider the weights w1 multiply it with the square of the difference between the points sum it up with the uh, square of the difference multiplied by the weight and the square root of this so this is the weighted the uh, euclidean distance formula okay any one of them you can choose and explore then similarly you have squared euclidean distance chebyshev uh, distance so slight uh, variation is there cosine cosine uh, the major difference between uh, cosine similarity compared to all the other points is in cosine similarity we will be considering the vector of values okay so it will show how uh, similar the data objects are normally this is applied whenever you have text comparison it has to be made okay so a and b are two vectors okay so it is the dot product of a and b that we are considering over here so this is the formula that is uh, used over here so uh, a will be considered as a uh, vector of values b is again a, another vector of values okay and you proceed okay so any doubts till this point any specific questions okay so now we'll move on to data representation for clustering and the type of uh, data so this is uh, very important whenever we want to run any kind of algorithm we have to check on the type of the data so basically you have uh, two major categories numerical and categorical as the name indicates numerical the data that you have will be in terms of numbers like age weight number of children shoe size etc categorical means it is in terms of words you will not be having numerical value for it okay like for example eye color gender blood type ethnicity okay now in numerical you have continuous and discrete continuous is uh, somewhere uh, you have uh, in finite options whereas in discrete you have finite options and uh, you can just consider it as a real number and um, integer number okay something like that age weight blood pressure are continuous whereas discrete values are shoe size shoe size you will have uh, 6 7 8 5 like that you will not have 5.5 5.2 and all isn't it so the uh, the number of children so number of children also discrete you will say either two children or three children you will not say two and a half isn't it so that is what is discrete in categorical you have ordinal and nominal type ordinal means you have uh, 
uh, data wherein uh, there is a uh, hierarchy in the sense ordering ordering is there pain severity whether it is very severe whether it is mild whether it is extreme okay that is ordering ordering is there okay and then for example rating rating of restaurants okay i want to rate the restaurant this is best you rate it on a scale of 1 to 5 there is an order to it 5 means it is the best 1 means poor something like that nominal there is no ordering of the data okay any order you can put it for example color red blue green i can put it in any um uh, i can mention it in any order and hence it is called as nominal okay blood type a positive b positive o positive o negative things like this there is no specific order so now key to clustering is you just have to consider whether one data point is similar or dissimilar okay if it is dissimilar you will not put it in that group simple so uh, various distance functions are there different types uh, numerical for quantitative it is also called as quantitative and uh, categorical is called as qualitative data then stopping <clears throat> what is the stopping criteria so how do you stop the uh, k means uh, at what point do you stop or converge so whenever there is no reassignments of data points to different clusters that is every iteration you find that uh, the same data points belong to the same clusters there is no movement of data points from one cluster to another cluster you stop okay then second point either there is no change of centroid and as we have seen in this particular uh, particular example there was no change in the centroid values iteration 3 and 4 also had same data uh, centroid points hence we did not uh, go to iteration 5 we stopped there next minimum uh, decrease in the sum of the square errors ssc you find the sum of the square errors uh, by uh, this particular formula and uh, there is uh, it is not decreasing there is very min minor minor decrease in the ssc value sum of the square errors then you stop okay then next based on cluster quality also you can choose to converge the algorithm okay either you calculate uh, i mean for cluster quality to analyze the quality of the cluster you go for intra cluster cohesion or inter cluster separation okay so inter cluster uh, cohesion will give you compactness so cohesion measures how near the data points in the cluster are if it is very near to the cluster points um, the sum of square error ssc will be very minimum okay uh, then inter cluster separation separation uh, from one cluster to another cluster should be far off that is there should not be overlapping clusters if there are overlapping clusters then your data points are not proper you have to do a pre processing on that data points before you proceed okay next how do you measure what is a good clustering algorithm okay based on the cohesiveness high intra cluster similarity gives you very good cluster low inter class that is from one cluster to another class uh, cluster you are able to clearly differentiate the groups then it is also good the quality of the clusters is good okay and this quality depends on what similarity measure that is used either uh, which similarity metric you have used then its implementation then ability to discover some or all hidden patterns for example your data points has an outlier point okay one huge uh, some different number you have then it, uh, the cluster quality will come down okay so uh, this normalization is normally applied see here you can see here this data point uh, uh, xi is uh, 0.1 and 20 xj is 0.9 and 720 okay when you have 720 over here it is a huge very big number that is uh, given over here okay when this number is uh, given over here which is very huge it will create uh, when you, can, you apply the distance formula it will create an offset that is a very huge number will uh, create a problem for you okay you will not be able to cluster the points properly because of this huge data point so you need to remove this or you need to apply normalization there might be uh, if your uh, data set consists of uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, records no manually you cannot check it so you have to you can apply normalization technique which will normalize the value and see that the values uh, remain between 0 and 1 another 
uh, technique is z score it will transform all the values between 0 and 1 and hence you can uh, <clears throat> apply the clustering algorithm and your cluster quality also will be much better okay so that is uh, um, that was all with respect to k means now we'll move on to hierarchical clustering okay so uh, hello uh, shall i give you 5 minutes break before we move to hierarchical clustering or shall i proceed ma'am how long will it take ma'am uh, another uh, implementation i have a real world example uh, using python uh, uh, in uh, using hierarchical clustering okay it will take another python. 15 minutes ma'am yeah it will take more than 15 minutes maybe half an hour yeah because we have another session scheduled at 2 o'clock so uh -huh. we is it we continue the session ah okay then we'll uh, i will continue then okay yeah thank you okay 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 this now we will come to the second uh, type of uh, clustering technique hierarchical clustering so as the name indicates hierarchical clustering you start with one um, uh, huge cluster okay um, and then you see how you can uh, cluster, uh, create a dendrogram here okay so here what we do the, the the complete method is summarized over here place all the points in their own clusters that is what you do each of the data points you consider them to be one single cluster okay if there are 100 data points 100 clusters are formed then you go on merging the clusters based upon their similarity okay go on merging and then you will get one huge cluster at the end okay so you can see here for clustering what are the techniques that you can use you can use single link you can use average link or you can use complete link okay in single link what uh, you will do is you will go on finding the uh, distance between the points which are uh, closest okay then next average link you will find the average between the data points and find the distance complete link you will find the distance between the farthest data points okay these are the techniques for merging okay when you, uh, you there should be some criteria for merging isn't it so the criteria either you can use single link average link or complete link so you can see here the distance between a and b uh, a and b are nearer i have grouped e and f are nearer i have put them in one group then a b c are nearer i have put them in one group okay then next d you would put it into uh, the group which uh, is clustered into a b c rather than f and e group correct because d is much nearer compared to the a b c group so like this the uh, this is the tree that you have formed this is the dendrogram so you can see that uh, there are uh, six points and this is how you have done the grouping okay so hierarchical clustering weakness is uh, the major point is um, if there are two points uh, from the disjoint cluster and they happen to be nearer to each other the distinction between the clustering will be lost that is uh, what this point tells us if they exhibit completely different behavior there are chances that the algorithm can group them together we will see an example for this in the coming slides okay then you can uh, on the other hand average link and complete link clustering are biased towards spherical clusters okay just like as we had seen in uh, k means uh, weakness okay and uh, it does not really produce clusters actually as you have seen here can you know how many clusters are over here no correct visually when you identify and draw a horizontal line or something uh, then you can say okay i, I have grouped them into basically uh, two clusters or something okay so it does not explicitly give you the count of the clusters okay and just like k means it is also sensitive to noise and outliers you can see here this is how the clustering is done based on the latitude and longitude of the places so uh, uh, places which are nearer are grouped together or places which are nearer are marked in green over here pink they are nearer to each other they are grouped together okay like this all these which are marked in red they are grouped together okay we will see an variation of this see i was telling you one weakness uh, point or the drawback of this uh, hierarchical clustering you can see here nigra and india they are quite farther apart and no way there is similarity on on which you can group them okay they are completely spurious data there is no connection between the two but it has grouped hierarchical algorithm has grouped this is the disadvantage or drawback of this algorithm okay and another uh, 
this is uh, when you want to draw the tree you know uh, the dendrogram might be too congested if you have more number of data points in the cluster okay so in hierarchical you can further divide it as bottom up and top top down bottom up is called as agglomerative top down is called as divisive bottom up as the name indicates from the bottom uh, you go on grouping which exhibit similar characteristics and you arrive at one cluster top down uh, you start with one huge cluster and divide it okay so this is how your uh, cluster looks like you go on uh, grouping them choose the best at each uh, choose the best and go on grouping grouping and in the end you'll get one huge cluster like this top down is the reverse of this okay you will have this cluster you go on breaking up based upon the characteristics or the features that you find best and group them and break it up okay so no specific uh, number of clusters are required in advance hierarchy uh, so you don't have to specify like k means k equal to 2 k equal to 3 like that so directly you need to start off uh, dividing and it takes uh, big o of n square complexity and uh, interpretation or results are very subjective okay so it maps into human intuitions for some domain so you can see here you can see here uh, uh, from this if you just draw a horizontal line over here you can say that there are two big huge clusters okay but outlier detection you can see here there is one point so that will give you give rise to another branch in the dendrogram over here you can say it is an outlier okay steps to perform uh, the this one hierarchical clustering so you go on measuring uh, start at one cluster agglomerative if it uh, uh, i mean one cluster go on dividing it uh, remove one point so it becomes k minus 1 then again remove another point uh, to form another cluster it forms k minus 2 clusters so like this you go on dividing and you will get a dendrogram okay so now we will quickly we will see as you all said another session is starting at 2 o'clock shopping dot uh, data and see how hierarchical clustering can be applied on the c there is a customer id gender male or female age group is given then annual income is given spending score is given so what we will try to do over here is we will try to cluster uh, 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 and see how you can uh, cluster this data okay into people who spend more people who spend less which age group will spend more what is the salary or income okay so this is the um, python script for it importing the libraries okay and then i have a uh, 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 pd.read uh, csv read csv uh, is nothing but the data that uh, shopping dot uh, data which is stored in a csv file is read and you are creating customer data instance so customer data contains all the shopping data uh, fields and the records that i have just now shown to you then check the records then customer underscore data dot shape will give you 200.5 um, as the output it means that there are 200 rows and five columns in the data set okay so this is your how your data set will look so for that you can just say uh, all the your data is stored in customer underscore data um, uh, instance of that object uh, the head function if you use it will list the first five uh, records of the head if you want the uh, if you want to see the last five records you could use the tail method okay and this is how your data looks like from the data set now what we have to do is uh, you want to remove unwanted uh, details we don't want gender now as of now we just want to group based upon their income what is their spending spending score is given will they uh, how much will they spend what is the range based upon their income uh, and the sp uh, spending score you want to group it okay so this is how uh, we uh, we have the code uh, python code uh, for uh, uh, considering uh, removing the values okay uh, just consider from um, remove customer id gender and age just consider all those uh, columns from 3 uh, 3 to 5 so your index starts from 0 okay in python the array index starts from 0 so you can see here i am removing 0 1 and Two. I'll consider three and four. In uh, when you are writing it in the array, you just have to write three is to five. Okay, dot values. So this is how uh, the Python. Uh, I mean, I'll draw the uh, dendrogram first, and I've used the uh, method equal to word. Here you can use replace this with uh, single uh, 
लिंकेज एवरेज लिंकेज और दंप्लीट लिंकेज ओवर हियर ओके तो दिस इज दिस इज हाउ द डेंडोग्राम लुक्स लाइक and when i draw a horizontal line over here i'll come to know how many clusters are formed okay uh, so there are 3 4 5 major clusters that are formed don't draw the horizontal line over here when you are drawing the horizontal line over here um it should pass through the longest distance uh, without any other um, this one so longest distance is it covers 3 4 5 five points over here uh, so the total number of clusters will be 5 so this is the output as i said 0 1 2 or 3 4 and all are cluster group numbers to which the data particular data point belongs to okay i've used euclidean distance over here and then the total number of clusters is 5 as i said then i'll predict the data so for predicting uh, see you can see here from uh, sklearn um, dot cluster i'm importing agglomerative clustering okay and i will uh, uh, for agglomerative clustering algorithm i'll supply all these parameters and create an uh, uh, instance called cluster to this i'll fit that data okay uh, fit predict data so you're predicting the data now and then you can see the output like this it belongs to five groups now okay so this is the group so what is the analysis that you make you can see here all these which is marked in red uh, gives you and the interpretation uh, like this uh, the red data points uh, green data points let us say uh, customers at the top this uh, these are customers with high salary and high spending you can see here high salary and high spending the values are over here, over here. Uh, uh, the the score is from 0 to 100 which is on the y axis and then spending is uh, uh, salary is uh, given on the x axis so this is high spending low salary low spending is marked in red blue is the in between group okay uh, the advertising agency or the uh, shop owners can target high salary as well as the one which is marked in blue which indicates <clears throat> customers in the uh, blue uh, data points with average income and average salaries okay so this is uh, how we have uh, given here one which is marked in uh, red represents customers with um, in the bottom right bottom right bottom right is this purple they have high salary but the spending is less low spending okay this is how you analyze this is the conclusion so conclusion clustering technique can be very handy when it comes to unlabeled uh, data since most of the data in the real world is unlabeled annotating the data has higher cost clustering techniques can be used to label unlabeled data okay uh, any specific question you want me to show how the how you can code in anaconda anybody how to start anaconda you want me to show uh, two minutes i will take and i will show this one sure sure madam ha ah, yeah two minutes i just show you how to start this i have already loaded over here so uh, i have already installed this anaconda you just uh, after installing uh, in the slide no you can just click on that link and install this so once you installed you can uh, start the instance of this i'm just uh, हाँ मैं ओके हेल्प हाउ डू इज माय स्क्रीन विजिबल नाउ आई जस्ट स्टॉप प्रेजेंटिंग एंड रीस्टार्ट so this is how uh, the screen looks like okay and all these are different uh, um, libraries uh, related to the anaconda package so you can just go to the jupiter uh, notebook which is being displayed over here 
and you can launch the jupiter uh, notebook so once i say launch it will start so it is uh, launching now next then you can go to the specific browser to open this yeah this is how it looks like then you can go to this hello world dot ipynb from here you can do the coding or untitled or on your screen also you can see here sometimes you'll get untitled one untitled will be new one you can go there and start so this is how so you can just uh, start typing the code and whenever you want a new window you can just press this plus symbol and you can just uh, say control enter to execute this code so k means algorithm thing is over here so just control enter you will get this code okay customer dot uh, shopping data thing i have uh, put it over here so i'll just execute this so if there is any error it will display here itself it is an interpreter so um, and this is the thing um, so when i execute this uh, control enter it will show the data now because the data i think this is uh, located in a different uh, location so it is not able to show the output over here so i can just say uh, shopping data if it is there it will show the output so this uh, i mean the entire uh, information where uh, this uh, csv file is loaded shopping data file wherever it is loaded the complete path has to be uh, given over here okay i think it is in uh, documents uh, hopefully this works so okay uh, that data has been shifted over here hence it, because of that it is giving the error you give the complete path where it is either in documents or uh, in uh, this one uh, it will uh, execute and uh, give you the output as uh, 200.5 and then um, customer uh, underscore data dot head it will display the first five uh, records okay and then uh, uh, this um, uh, you want to extract only the fields that are important to you as i told customer id gender age is not required for us i want to remove it and i consider only annual income and spending score so the uh, values i have given over here okay 3 and 5 okay so you set the path properly over here it will be okay so say so if you once you set that uh, path you can uh, get the information okay and then this is the dendrogram which i have uh, drawn and executed the dendrogram looks like this okay i have used agglomerative clustering over here and then uh, the cluster instance are fed over here and then the mm, uh, clusters to which the data point belongs to the cluster numbers are given over here okay and then uh, you can group it based on one the cluster uh, numbers that are given over here okay and uh, this is the uh, graph that i have obtained okay and this is how it looks like uh, your data complete data and uh, scatter plot you can draw okay and if uh, this is how it looks like okay any uh, any doubts you have you can ask me yeah tell me any doubts you have so this path i'll copy that path here hello yeah uh, madam good yeah, afternoon madam yeah yes good afternoon yeah uh, madam this is software to download first of all and uh, later we can run that programs madam by using this yes yes. yes yes so the just now i showed you know this is the thing uh, jupiter um, uh, anaconda you have to uh, download first that link i have given in the ppt i'll share the ppt okay uh, just go to that link and you uh, download anaconda then after that uh, you can uh, open this jupiter notebook okay launch this so in the browser it will be launched you can go to this browser and start typing the commands like this and execute okay, okay. control enter you should go on pressing control enter it will execute and uh, you can see the output okay okay okay, okay. 
Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Participants, if you have any questions, uh, you can post your questions on the chat box. Many of them have told it is useful. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma I think there was shortage of time. I yes, had to hurry a little bit. Yes, yes, mm. ma'am. Yes, ma ma it was really a good session, ma'am. Thank you so much. Mm. Ma'am, uh, we yeah. shall take a group photo virtually, ma'am. Uh, I request uh, yeah. everyone to turn on your cameras. We shall take a group photo with uh, uh, Rajeshri, ma'am. Yeah, I'm visible. Uh, ma'am, uh, if you can stop sharing, yeah. I think we can. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Thank you. I request all the participants to turn on your cameras. We shall take a group photo with uh, uh, Rajeshri ma'am today. Participants, kindly turn on the camera. Uh, ma'am, ma you also, ma'am, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it is visible, no? My camera is on. Uh, no, ma'am, uh, we cannot see yeah. you. Here, actually, if, uh, through the mobile, uh, I have uh, done it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you connected? Yeah, through mobile, uh, uh, because uh, my uh, desktop doesn't oh. have a webcam. Oh, okay, so. okay ma'am, no problem, ma'am, no problem. I think uh. through my mobile, uh, it is visible. Yeah, you can also connect through phone if possible, ma'am. Yeah, easy. through phone only I have connected. It's I am able to see my uh, Okay, ma'am. Uh, okay, ma'am, okay, okay. It's um, not visible, is it? On no, ma'am, it's not visible, ma'am. Uh, I request other participants to kindly turn on your camera. Ma'am, we are able to see you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's yes, right. Because even yes, ah, yes, we can okay. see you. Yeah. yeah, okay, ma'am. We'll take photo, everyone, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, uh, we are very much thankful to you for accepting our invitation yeah. at the uh, end moment and uh, delivering a very good session, ma'am. Thank you so much. Oh. Oh. Thank you. I thank GSS for giving me an opportunity to present. Yes, ma'am. Thank oh. you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. We'll close then. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, uh, participants, uh, we will be starting the... Uh, we'll be... Uh, starting the next session by 2.30 p.m. So everybody kindly log in uh, to the same link uh, by 2.20 p.m. Thank you all.